That's not going anywhere. I think that's what I'm supposed to say, right, Aaron? I think so. Okay, let's go. And we're back. It's a new day. And uh, <laughs> yesterday, driving the tractor home, the bucket fell. Well, who made a real nice loud noise on the trailer whenever we were driving? It was alarming, but no harm. So we got to get the bucket picked back up before we can get it off the trailer. And that's exciting. <laughs> yeah, I know. He's trying to figure out why the hydraulic pump isn't working to lift the, the bucket up. I mean, it shouldn't have to be in gear or anything for that to work. Let's see if the PTO turns. Should be under that shield. No, sir, no movement. All right, I wasn't filming because uh, I had my hands busy, but we decided to try and manually pick up the bucket and we got it. So I put this little piece of angle iron here and a hose clamp this time to keep the bucket where we want it. Cool. Time to unload this cotton picking tractor. <laughs> we needed another thing in our yard, right? Mm -hmm. Just put the uh, high-tech engine cover back on. Now I don't have to move this dirt by hand. Yeah. <laughs> the guys that did the house, they were like, where do you want that? And I didn't have a tractor yet. And I was like, leave it there. Because I knew that I have to buy a tractor. Needed an excuse to get yeah. a tractor, huh? I'm good. I like it. She's dandy. I like it. So why do we buy an old tractor that has blown engine? Well, it's interesting. I grew up on a tractor that looks just like this, but it was a 950. And it just has really fond memories. You know, I used to mow the grass, plow the fields, all that. I learned to drive on a tractor just like this. And it's just special to me. The other reason is new ones are 25,000 bucks. And we are not debt people, and we don't want to take that much money out of the bank. So I paid $1,100 for this. I've got about $1,000 in parts. So for under say four grand once we get new tires on it, we have a really nice little tractor. And if we're using it every day, we might spend the money, but we're not, you know, it's something that's gonna get used once a week or so. And this one's really special. It's great, we like it. So our first task to get this thing in the shop is we're gonna take the bucket off of it. We're gonna use the Chevy Love to drag it into the shop. And then once we get it in the shop, we're gonna pull the bucket off. But uh, yeah, that's the plan right now. that's all we can get done today next time you'll see us it'll be time to pull this engine right yeah pull the front axle off and the engine see y'all soon
Yeah. Yep. Here's your main bearing. Wow. Press is in. And what condition is it in? Uh, it's got some wear on it, but it would run a long time. You have lots of experience with diesel engines, but you've never built one of these, right? I do, yeah. This is a pretty unique little engine. I've never seen one before. I know there's timing gears in here. I know this is the fuel pump. This is probably a window to help you time the fuel pump. So we're going to try to get it in time and then pull this front cover off, see what we're looking at. I was able to download the John Deere service manual for this. So I have it on my laptop. We got to refer to that. For now, I think we try to get the crank in time and then see what this window's showing us. We're curious as to how tractor content is going to do on our channel. Boat content certainly surprised the heck out of us. So I don't know if there's as many uh, people that want to watch tractor content. We shall see. Now we'll have cars, boats, airplanes, tractors. We have another channel called Jump In with Aaron and Emily. And it has like camping and cooking and kind of lifestyle stuff. And we're going to be doing home renovations this year on that channel. So that's going to be fun too. So that one's linked in channels. If you want to go subscribe to that one. Dogs dog content. Can't forget the dog content. So he just cleared off this mark on the crank pulley and we do have a cylinder at Top Deck Center. Yep. And that is number two. So we'll turn it one more time, get that other one up, and then we should have a window in our fuel, on our uh, fuel pump gear. And we don't have a piston in there, but we'll know because of the crank position. Yeah, the crank will be all the way up. Yeah. Okay, it's all the way down. I'm wrong. Brain's not working. Is it two rotations, maybe? No. I was thinking of the camshaft. The crank goes one round, the cam goes two. Speed. Why is that marked in number one? Let's just get the other one up and see if there's any marks. Over there. Yep, there's a number two and a mark right there. So, the back piston is number one. Yeah, now you can see number two there. That's number two in top dead center. That's number one, I guess. Cool. Oh. Oh, yeah. There's even green parts inside there. Yeah. That looks pretty complicated. Yeah. So that's shut off. Here, click. That's throttle. I think it's a matter of just trying to get this front cover off. That won't be timed. Your, how much fuel it's getting. So that's your gas pedal basically. These are not just gaskets, that's a shim. That shims your timing. So if you pull this in or out, it'll make it fire sooner or later. Just like twisting the distributor on your car. We have to pick up those shims. Wow. 
timing is very simple in this engine. There's a zero there, a zero on the crankshaft, and then over here on the cam, there's two zeros. So that zero goes in between these two, and then the cam's in time. And because the cam's in time, the fuel pump will be in time because the fuel pump fires off these, see these two lobes right here. So this right here, when you install that, has got to slide into this fork right here. And then everything's going to work again. Next thing is going to be get this big nut off here. And that's either going to be a custom built socket or a big wrench I don't have. Success. Man found a wrench. He found us a wrench. He found one? The nut is metric, but this one's close. So we're going to go home and see if we can strip it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, already? Just like that? Came off. <gasps> it worked. That's awesome. Good well, job. It was not as tight as I thought it would be. So torquing it may not be a problem then? Nope. He was worried about torquing it, but... It wasn't super duper duper tight, so that's a really good thing. We are a big fan of this um, degreaser from CRC. It's uh, water-based, so it's not a super super harsh um, chemically degreaser, which we like, and it can be used on paint. So it's not going to melt everything off, but we kind of do want to restart with fresh paint on this thing. So we'll probably take the paint off anyway, but this is step one in degreasing. to take the rings off of these pistons and they are just seized on there like these pistons had to have had water sitting on them at some point so we're gonna try and soak them overnight in evapo rust we've had a super productive day and this is gonna be our last little task for the day okay in they go in the basket Happy bath time. See you tomorrow. <laughs> See y'all tomorrow. Howdy y'all. We're back at the shop and it's time to get a little more progress done on the little tractor engine. I'm getting ready to pull those pistons out of the evapo rust that we put them in last night and then I'm gonna rinse them off and then hopefully Aaron can get the rings off of them after soaking in the evapo rust, evapo rust all night. Words. <laughs> Let's see how they look. Success on the pistons, getting the rings out is awesome. Um, Aaron was just getting ready to unload this bag from the parts store, so let's see what he got. All right. Assembly lube. Ooh, good. We actually had some on the shelf that I had forgotten because yeah. it's been a while since we built an engine. <laughs> so true. Now we have extra. A hone, 
Do those so. cylinders have some rust in them? How are you feeling about our cylinders? I, I think it's gonna run just fine. We've got some gouging over here on this one. So you can't catch a fingernail on it, but it's there. And you can definitely feel where the rings stop going down the cylinder on the bottom and on the top. So the cylinders have some wear, but it's insignificant. And I'm confident the way we have them right now, those new rings are gonna break in, it'll be fine. Even if it has a touch of blow by, this block's like 1500 bucks, so I'll be fine with that. <laughs> Makes sense to me. Yep. Well, all right. I have a can of paint. I've just cleaned the parts off of the uh, area where I degreased them and washed them, cleaned them. And now I'm going to start with a little layer of paint. I got down here to paint and I was like, I really should tape off this head surface. So I'm gonna do that. Done. I went and got the other, a few of the other components that are going to need to look fresh on the engine. I gotta admit, I was a little bit lazy degreasing these so the paint might not stick quite as beautifully. <laughs> I'm an imperfect creature, what can I say? Uh, but they're getting some paint on them. There was a cool little, um, plaque on this uh, fuel pump and I taped that off so that was you know going above and beyond at that particular thing but um, this stuff's looking really good so about to check this off the list all right we moved all of our John Deere parts inside that are all painted up and fresh, and Aaron is on a task this morning already. So I got a stud. One of these bolts broke off. I went to the parts store and found this stud extractor. I've never owned one of these. I'm curious if it's going to work. It seems like it's biting on there. But every time I tighten it, it kind of slides out. Like maybe it's trying to slip off. Twenty freaking years of drilling studs out, <laughs> and I just randomly find that in the parts store. Holy cow! The hole's gonna be tapped. You can see it. It was just seized in there. So this little thing grabbed it hard for it to pull that out of the block like that. That's so awesome. Yeah. That thing gripped the heck out of that stud. It did awesome. Here's the part number on it. It's from OEM Tools. 25438. What a great tool. Wow. Awesome. They got the socket, and it's just a tiny bit smaller than that bearing. So it should go through the block and knock that bearing out. Let's see. Okay, it does not look like it's been spun. You would have lines going this way. And, oops, yep, there's Long a little hole there, so it did spin a little bit. Oh. So we're gonna clean that, put some thread locker on it, and knock it back in where that lines up. Not, we're not gonna knock this one in, we're gonna knock the new one in, <laughs> to be clear. <laughs> I'm a redneck, but not that redneck. <laughs> Emily, oh. the world does not revolve around you. So I think this will be a good time to spray this out, because you know there's going to be metal in there. So she'll be able to spray through these two and should clean all the stuff out. Because okay. that's where the oily pump goes. 
the oily pump. Yep. <laughs> That's where the suction tube goes. Let's try the other one. <laughs> okay. Something else. Oh, that's that one. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Mm-hmm. So you need to spray down on that one. Yep. Wash all your paint off. Yeah, lovely. <laughs> Is it typical to use thread locker on bearings? I, I don't know. When on big trucks, when I'm doing cam bearings, it's very common because um, they have a tendency to want to spin on you. And because this block took a little damage, because it looks like it turned about a quarter inch or a quarter of a turn, um, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. And we're using the red thread locker as opposed to the blue, right? Yep. Right. So because of high temperature rating on that one, it's going to be No, it's better. not a temperature temperature rating. It's a strength. Oh, okay. And I want this to be permanent, so <laughs> we're using the good stuff. So the red is stronger hold than the blue. Mm-hmm. It sure is. If you're dealing with small, fine thread stuff, do not use this. It'll make it permanent. You can't get your bolt back out. It'll strip out. Okay. Never come off juice. That's pretty much it. <laughs> so our oil comes through here. You can see it. Yep. Oh, let's see. This one goes down first. And there's a different shoulder on here. A wider bevel on one side yep. than the other. So we're going to put it back the way it was. That looks pretty lined up. Now if I can get this started. Still wound up. It's all stuff that's shaved off the outside of it. That is tight. Our holes lined up. It's not perfect, but plenty of oil is coming through there. When you're hitting that, if you ever mess it up like I did right here, you've got to get that off. So a little rat tail file or something, just take that edge off. It'll be fine. I've done it hundreds, maybe thousands of times. So this is where our rear main bearing lives. So you take this whole thing off, pull the crank out. This rides on the back of the crank. I want to try and get that out. We can run that. It's got wear on it, but it's not spun and it's not like galled up. So we can run it if I can't find a socket big enough to go on there and knock that out. But for now, I'm going to get this old sill out. There it is. So he's just inspecting this bearing and mm -hmm. we cannot seem to find anything that we can get it out with. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I think we'll just reuse it, right? I think so. I just put it on the crank. It fits nice and tight. It's showing wear, but my experience has been even new bearings are going to show wear like that after just a few miles. So I think we're going to leave it. Okay. It'll run. It'll outlive me. <laughs> if you keep oil in it. <laughs> <laughs> Try. It may not be worth it if I don't have you. All right. We've, <laughs> we've accomplished about 40 minutes worth of work. Yeah. It's 1 o'clock, so I think it's taco time. Taco time. Taco 30. Yep. Cool. Bye, Finley. You can't go. You're a dog. You can't go. He's very needy. Yum.
We just dipped into O'Reilly's real quick to grab a battery for the tractor and we're getting ready to leave on a road trip so we grabbed a few road trip essentials and as we were checking out our friend Cody was like why haven't y'all joined O Rewards yet and turns out you can earn one point for every dollar that you spend at O'Reilly's and every month they have specials where certain items you get double or triple points and we bought a jump starter that earned us $20 worth of points. So essentially it sends you emails or text messages if you go digital with your account and you can get a text that's essentially a coupon for whatever points you've earned. So it's like money off of what you would be spending on parts or products. Like we got two times points on our coolant that we bought and of course our brake clean. So it's cool. It's like big ticket items and everyday essentials. So kind of awesome. Join that. It's going to be cool to see those points add up and uh, let's get back to the shop and get to work. All right. Holes tapped on the block. Bolt's going to be able to go in there so our engine won't fall out. That's a plus. <laughs> now we're going to work on the crank. I've never seen a main bearing like this. Check it out. It's got a housing. Splits right there. And this slides up in the block and there's a pin that goes from the bottom that holds this from rotating. I put an arrow on it, showing that's the front of the crank. So I'm gonna take that off, clean this up, get the new bearing in it, and then sandwich it back down on there. That bearing needs replacing. It has not spun though. You can see right there, that provision's still there. And that's your thrust bearing. That's what keeps the crank from going in and out. So, goodbye. same. This is on each side and the holes in the same place. Standard. That's what I bought. So. Cool. Get this cleaned up and get some new ones in it. Now would absolutely be the time that I would get to work cleaning parts, but I can't because the baby just curled up right here. And he's so comfortable. He's nuzzling his nose and took, just took a deep breath. He's too comfortable here. Mm -hmm. Fresh new bearings. Mm -hmm. They are standard, it says right there. We could mic them, but it'll do no good because the other ones are so screwed up. <laughs> Oh, yes. And those are some of the tightest bearings I've ever put in. John Deere ain't messing around. Mm -mm. When you're putting bearings in, really pay attention to these holes. See how that lines up there? Um, a lot of times there'll be a top and a bottom. So one of them won't have that hole. But in this case, they're universal. Just something to think about. You do not want to get that wrong. Because then your oil won't be able to access your bearings, right? Exactly. It'll fill pretty quickly. new to our engine <laughs> the place that I got all the engine parts you could buy a crank supposedly rebuilt which probably means they have a good used one and they polished it 
it was over 700 bucks. This one came from eBay for under 200 bucks. There's no sign of heat, and this is a really good crank. Okay, put this one on first. Arrow goes to the front. Beautiful. There's a little divot right here. See that? How it kind of swoops down and then it jumps up? Yeah. Got the same thing on this. Yep, see it? That's an arrow. So we know this one goes like this. Cool. That looks pretty. Torque them too. Sixty five. Cool. Time for lifters. Mm -hmm. These are marked. One, two, three, four. Okay. That's the way it goes. Okay, it's crank time. Time to get cranked. Otherwise, Aaron's gonna get cranky. <laughs> Let's start forcing photos on him. Dude, this is awesome. Yeah, you can pick up on that. Okay. Pretty lined up to me. It does. Just got to get it happy with the block. Yeah, that bolt will line it up the rest of the way as I slowly tighten it. Don't use impacts on stuff like this, guys. I'm not saying I've never done it, but especially if you haven't built a lot of engines, you need to be able to feel it. Feel those threads, that way you don't yep. strip something that's so vital. Yep, 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 yep. Makes sense. I can feel it twisting this and lining everything up. This bottomed out. Give it a little pressure. Took a crank. Beautiful. That's exactly what I want. Brand new. Dang. Sweet. I can see how happy you are. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Awesome. That's the cutest darn engine I ever did see. I know. I just don't have the tools to get that bearing out. This definitely has some wear on it. I think it'll run and be just fine. All right, we're gonna use it. Okay. You better bet the internet's gonna tell you what they think. Yep, <laughs> they sure are. <laughs> free country, they're entitled to their opinions. That's right. That's right, and we want them to voice their opinions. Yes, we do. New o-ring goodness, or is this considered mm. a gasket? It's o-ring. You guys do this. When I put o-rings on, I always do this to make sure they're not rolled in there. If you just roll it down, then it'll have a twist mark. 
mm. and it can cut the o-ring now on this piece oil comes in here so you need to find where it comes in that's right there that's actually a little dirty i'm gonna clean that up some but see on the outside here you want to make sure that's lined up otherwise that rear bearing is not getting oil serious over here now. <laughs> All right, line that up. Okay. Mm -hmm. That last hit sounded like it flush. Turns like I want it to. Get that bolted down. Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> He's still alive. We have a squirrel problem, y'all. The squirrels get in from the corners of our shop right here and they're such jerks and they walk along here and they've fallen through these holes and the one guy was peeking his head out right there <laughs> and aaron <laughs> finley's no good he doesn't even care oh he's coming back some more. i can see his little feet moving right there boy you better get out of here you better leave Oh my gosh. <gasps> he's coming back. Oh, maybe he's got a headache. <laughs> he might be disoriented. <laughs> Probably is. Jeez. <laughs> okay, back to engine building. <laughs> that Joker's peeking out again. You can barely see him, but he's peeking out again. Look. Look at him. He's like, is that all you got? <laughs> what are you even thinking, dude? Oh my gosh. I'm so excited to jump on this tractor and hit the key and get stuff done around the yard. That's going to be so cool. Aaron's been wanting a tractor. We have a small case tractor that we've wanted to rebuild for a while, but it's not quite as capable as this one. So maybe once we see how good this does here on the YouTubes, I mean, if it, you know, surprises us like the boat videos did. Maybe we'll be doing more tractor content mm -hmm. <laughs> and rebuild the little case tractor that we have. Uh, but he'd always wanted a John Deere tractor. His grandfather, in fact, um, was a big John Deere guy. And so he's always wanted a John Deere of his own, mm -hmm. a newer one. He actually has a vintage John Deere that his grandfather gave him. That, yep. that would also be a cool like build for the channel. Mm -hmm. But he said that he wants to name this tractor Ralph after his grandfather and fun fact both our grandfathers are named Ralph well on his mom's side and my mom's okay. side so awesome okay I better stop talking because it's time to torque this <laughs> sorry I was losing my like grip it. it was good Yep. Clicked over. That's tight.
Oh, I'm happy with that. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> it's a pretty satisfying sound, babe. <laughs> Cam gear? This is a crankshaft gear. Oh, it's going on this end. Got it. Mm -hmm. Keyway on there. Coming in hot with a camshaft. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what, what? So there's no bearing on the back and the middle journals. It rides in the block. So we got the block lubed up. We'll just put some lube on this and slide it in. This one doesn't need it, but I'm going to do it just to make it slide in easier. This, so the other one had one zero on it. This one has two. We'll mark those. And the crank will just go up inside there. Should be pretty simple. Zero, zero, and zero. That's it. Boom. We could check that, but there's no point because we can't adjust it. And I can feel that it's got enough. Crank and camera in time. Holy cow. That gear slanted so it kind of tricks you, but if you follow it down, it lines up. Sweet. Awesome. Yeah, that's enough. We don't want it to be so tight we can't get it out. Not that I plan on ever taking this apart again. But stuff happens. Like rear main bearings. <laughs> Sweet. Almost time for that front cover again. I thought you were going to say lunch. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm thinking, I'm you know, thinking about work. Good. I am hungry though. <laughs> but that's typical. He just exposed us. You guys thought this was the same day. But yesterday when we stopped and had Mexican food at like 2 o'clock, we never went back to work. <laughs> we went back to the house and watched football. He watched football. I took a nap. The sound of football puts me to sleep, to be quite honest. Um, and then, yes, it's a new day today. And it's about lunchtime. It's almost 2 o'clock again. Oops. Oops. <laughs> It's okay, it's the weekend. Today's Sunday. Yesterday was Saturday, so. We actually told ourselves we weren't going to work on the weekends this year. Yeah, but we're kind of catching up. Well, we're catching up. I've been down for a little while. <laughs> uh, it's good stuff. It's fun. We like it. Oil pump going on. And this is a brand new one, too. Yeah. It's over 200 bucks for this little thing. But highly important. Mm-hmm. 
Bueno. I like it. <laughs> yep, I'm happy. It's in time, oil pumps on. You got this a food mist that goes on here with the weights and the nut and the magic. But if I don't get this girl pork chop, she's gonna stop filming, which means I gotta stop working. <laughs> so I might as well just submit and stop. They can keep working, I can survive <laughs> on love alone. Right. Love and progress will mm. keep me alive. But a pork chop sounds really good. <laughs> and we said we needed a side so I made four pork chops so main course and side perfect it's healthy right yes That's what I was thinking yeah I I'm, I'm happy with this So good. We just finished our lunch. I swear. I said, babe, let's get back to it. Let's build the engine some more. And he was like, uh, I don't know. I got lazy. It's Sunday. Let's, let's go to the grocery store and get, he loves going to the grocery store. He's such a foodie. Let's get some groceries for the week. And that's what he said. So I guess that's what we're gonna do. Mm -hmm. But I guess we'll see y'all tomorrow. <laughs> well, all we have to do is break for lunch and then we're useless after that. <laughs> Crap. <laughs> oh well. Oh well. See y'all tomorrow.